Cool. Thank you, Mr Deputy President. Well, there's probably the one thing that I agree with the government about, and that is that this budget has changed and will change society, but it'll be for the worse, by far the worse. I think Senator Back must have been reading different documents to the ones we've been reading. Oh, yeah, single parents are going to get $750 extra when you've taken $3,000 off them, when you have taken their, super, their indexation off them, when you have taken their education supplement, which, by the way, just, they just got back in March, when you've taken that off them. No, single parents will not be better off. I can tell you that for sure. This is after you've dumped single parents onto New Start. You haven't fixed that. You haven't fixed New Start and raised it up so that people can actually stop living in poverty. What this budget will do is drive young Australians, older Australians, single parents, the most vulnerable, even deeper into poverty. Some of them are already struggling and living in poverty. This will drive far more people into poverty and drive those that are already into poverty far more into poverty, into deep and persistent disadvantage, which has inter intergenerational impacts that will take a long time for these families to recover from. These cuts take out over $12 billion from low-income earners, from families, pensioners, single parents and young people, and overshadow the other aspects of this budget. This is a fundamental change in our community to make it a much more tougher community to make these people suffer, because that's what this government's trying to do. They have made—it's almost as if they deliberately sat down and thought about how can we make it the toughest for the most vulnerable members of our community. And let me tell you, you succeeded. How could you consciously think that it is acceptable to take young people off New Start for six months and give them no means of support? That will change our community. Those young people will have no nothing. They won't be able to pay for any medicines, for any going to the doctor, for any absolutely necessary things. What are they supposed to do? That just under 30, what, go back to live with mum and dad? Come and go for mum and, mum and dad when they get back onto work for the doll because it's you have, it's on top of your normal waiting period, then you get six months of uh, waiting period on top of the six weeks waiting period, then you get six months waiting period with no payment, then you get work for the doll for, for up to 25 hours, and then you back off again, living on nothing. How do you pay for food? How do you pay your rent? How do you pay for the absolute necessities of life? You can't. That is mean and cruel and a harsh society. Is that their vision? Because you're going to achieve it. It's not a vision, by the way, that we, the Greens, share and never, ever will. How does this government think it is going to be building a better society? Who is doing the heavy lifting? The most vulnerable, older Australians, younger Australians, single parents and the vulnerable. That's who's doing the heavy lifting. As I said, single parents are copping cuts all over the place. Younger people will be far worse off. They'll have the compulsory job readiness activities for those who can find work. It's almost as if the government's sitting there thinking, oh, all these young people, they're just sitting there on the couch collecting their easy welfare. Have they never been or seen how hard it is for young people to find work? They're not out of work because they want to be. They're out of work because there is no jobs. So just making them poorer and dropping them to poverty, literally into poverty, because they will have no means of support, how do you think that is going to make it easy to find work? How do you think they're going to find clothes to even turn up for an interview? How do you think they're going to be employed if they have no proper attire to even go for an interview? I'd like to know, and I asked the Minister for, um, for Social Services, Minister Firefield, Assistant Minister for Social Services, Senator Firefield, yesterday, what evidence he had that living in poverty provides an extra incentive for people to find work. Of course, he couldn't provide one because there isn't any, because the evidence shows that, in fact, dropping people into poverty provides yet another barrier to employment. 
These are demeaning policies. They are designed to have the deserving and the undeserving. And if you're unfortunate in this world and in this country, from now on, you are the undeserving. And of course, the government had made their promise to pensioners, and now they think that Australians were fooled to think that they've kept it. They have raised the retirement age after, uh, into 2035. They will be indexing the pension, and it will make up to $100 uh, difference a fortnight to pensioners, but it's going to be after 2017. But in the meantime, there's lots of other little cuts around that are already going to impact on older Australians. This is cruel and it is mean. And I haven't even started touching yet on the impacts um, on Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Australians, because of course, first off, we've taken $534 million out of the budget to cover because they're supposed to be getting the administration uh, better. Now, the problem here is that the budget conveniently doesn't say which programs are surviving and which programs aren't. And Aboriginal organisations have got a letter that says, oh, well, we've made these cuts and we're making a decision about which programs and, pro uh, uh, programs and contracts will continue for, say, six months or 12 months. Basically, hang by the phone, folks, and we'll tell you whether in two in less than two months' time, your organisation's work will continue, your contract will continue, or whether it will um, finish. They've, of course, cut also funds to completely into National Congress, showing what complete disregard the so self-professed Prime Minister for Aboriginal Affairs has, what regard he has for self-determination and for Aboriginal people represent, elected Aboriginal people um, representing Ab Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. But I'd say this to the government. If you have, in fact, found, genuinely found $534 million worth of savings, why aren't you putting that back into Aboriginal programs? Because we are nowhere near closing the gap and a lot of indicators aren't being met. So we will not, under this budget, be meeting our close the gap commitments to, to meet close the gap within a generation. Again, mean, cruel and tricky to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Australians. And then, of course, we look for the impact on all these groups of people. Oh, sorry, what I should also mention there is that the cuts to New Start, the changes to New Start, the changes to youth allowance are going, and the, the increased healthcare costs are going to disproportionately impact on Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Another double whammy, on top of the cuts, double whammy for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Um, of course, then, we'll move on to, and Senator Denatale has, in, has already outlined today some of the impacts to the cuts to health care will cost. The cost of basic medical care will throw up a huge challenge to the most vulnerable and those on income support and low incomes. For those living on $255 a week, a hit of $7 for visiting a doctor is huge to your budget. And I will stop here again and just say, when you are living on Newstart, you're already living in poverty. Every single dollar counts. When you are living below the poverty line, you think about every dollar you spend because you have an extremely low and fixed income. The, uh, increasing the co-payments for prescription medicines for those on low income will also be a burden. And we already know that many people on low incomes aren't filling their prescriptions. And in fact, when we had an inquiry into the, um, some of the uh, Section 100 of the PBS uh, process, uh, the Community Affairs Committee found that in fact Aboriginal people would share prescriptions because. Uh, they could make them stretch longer. Of course, that's completely unacceptable. This is the sort of thing we are going to see under this government. This is going to fundamentally change our community, not for the better. It will be a darker, meaner, crueler future that the coalition and the Abbott government foresees for the most vulnerable members of our community. And we, the Greens, will not be a part of it. We will not help this government do in the most vulnerable members of our community.